welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. It's time to live the life of Riley. Now, I want everybody to know right up front that this is an AFARTS episode. AFRTS, for those of you who are unaware, stands for Armed Forces Radio and Television Services, or otherwise known as AFARTS. AFRTS. So this is an AFARTS episode, and that's why you won't hear any commercials. You'll just hear music in place of the commercials. Anyway, this is episode number 148 of The Life of Riley, and it is entitled, Simon is Advice Column Editor. Today's show originally aired on March 15th, 1947. The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Chester A. Riley is a man who usually agrees with his wife, except when they happen to be disagreeing about young Simon Vanderhopper, their daughter Babs's boyfriend and the bane of Riley's existence. You were wrong, Riley, and you know it. I was right. I only did my duty as a father. It's not your duty to humiliate your daughter by throwing her boyfriend out of the house. That Simon deserved it. He's a good-for-nothing loafer. Simon's a nice boy. Uh, some boy. Twenty-one years old, and he still eats swipeback. <laughs> Well, suppose he does. He ate up my whole box. <laughs> I don't like his tactics. All right, so you don't like him. Is that any reason to throw him out? I had my reason. I was listening when he was alone with Babs in the living room. But you didn't hear anything. That's why I threw him out. <laughs> I don't trust him. Why not? I don't trust any boy who... Who... I don't trust any boy. Why don't you have a little faith in people? When you were courting me, my father trusted you, didn't he? Yeah, but he regrets it to this very day. <laughs> Besides, the boys of today ain't got no respect for girls. The minute they meet one, bingo, they try to kiss her. I didn't kiss you until after we were married. Oh, you forget very easily. What about that time just after we got engaged on that boat ride? Didn't you put your arms around me and kiss me? Oh, well, well, that didn't count. I thought it was somebody else. <laughs> We're talking about Simon. Riley, you're wrong and you might as well admit it. I'm right and I'll prove it to you in the first place. Oh, I'm going to bed. Now, Good Peg, night. you... <laughs> That's women for you. Just when you're ready to win an argument, they walk out on you. Hiya, Pop. Oh, hello, Junior. Where you been so late? Over at Marilyn's house. Some children I got. A boy who likes girls and a girl who likes boys. <laughs> Well, what's wrong with liking girls? Oh, they're so stubborn. They're always in the right. Had an argument with Mom, huh? Well, not exactly an argument. We just had some words among us. Look, look, you told me if I wasn't in the right, Junior. I said... Now, don't drag me into this. It's out of my line. Fine state of affairs. A father can't even ask his 13-year-old son for advice. <laughs> oh, why ask me for advice? Has Dorothy Fairchild. Dorothy Fairchild? Oh, the one who writes that column in the paper? Yeah, about family problems and love stuff. Oh, yeah, I read that all the time. I... Well, Junior, that's not a bad idea. Give me a paper and pencil. I'm going to write her about that pet, Simon. Well, don't mention Simon's real name. Don't worry. I got plenty other names for him. <laughs> and I'll sign it Worried Fox. Well, let's see. Uh, Dear Dorothy Fairchild, I am a father, and I am married to a woman. We have a daughter, a girl, <laughs> and she likes a boy who is always hanging around the house. And what's more, this boy is a... Hey, hey, it's in the paper. She answered me. Look, and she says I'm right. I don't care what Dorothy Fairchild says. What do you mean you don't care? Babs is your daughter, too. Don't forget, we each got a half interest in her. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Okay, but I'm warning you, if she ever marries that no-good Simon, don't blame my 50%. Oh, I think it's perfectly ridiculous to write to Dorothy Fairchild. Oh, sure, you say it's ridiculous. That's because she says you're wrong. Listen to this. Dear worried father, from what you tell me about this case, you are entirely in the right. 
It is a father's duty to give guidance to his teenage daughter. And judging by your wife's attitude, I would say she is being very short-sighted. You see what she says, Peg? You need glasses. <laughs> woman's a nut. Oh, you're just sore because she says I'm right. All right, all right, you're right. You bet I'm right, and from now on I'm keeping tabs on Bed. And she ain't going with that loaf for Simon. By the way, where is Bed? Out with Simon. What? Who dared give her permission? I did. Well, we'll skip that. <laughs> where did they go? Oh, they just went dancing at the Palladium. The Palladium? You let... You said... How could you let her go among all those jitterbugs after we spent $200 straightening her teeth out? Well, good night, Simon, and thanks for a sensational evening. Wait, Bad. Don't say good night yet. There's something I gotta tell you. Simon, stop eating that twyback. What did you want to tell me? I love you, Bab. I love you manly. Oh, Simon, be serious. I am serious. I never said that to any other woman except my mother. Oh, I've got to go in now, Simon. Wait, woman of my dreams. Let me come in for a while. Oh, no, you can't. Daddy and Mother will be home from the movies at quarter to twelve. Well, it's only 11.30. That gives us 15 minutes together. Time for two games of dominoes. <laughs> Say you'll play with me. Oh, all right, you can come in. But just for a minute. Ah, oh, this precious moment. Kiss me, Bad. I will not. Let's live dangerously. <laughs> Simon, what's gotten into you lately? You've changed. I know. All my life, I was like the yearling, shy, timid, and gentle. Then you came along and wham, I'm the beast with five fingers. <laughs> Simon, you better go home. I want to marry you, Babs. I love you. Stop saying you love me. Marry me and I'll stop saying it. After <laughs> all, sure. I've got a good job now on the newspaper. Oh, you're just a copy boy. But I'll get ahead. I made friends with Dorothy Fairchild, the love expert. I'm practically her assistant. Oh, Simon, what do you know about love? What do I? Come here, Babs. Uh, now behave yourself. It's Daddy. I'm not afraid of your father. I love you, and I'm willing to fight for my love. Now, let me handle this, Peg. My father. Where will I hide? Oh, oh no. No, not in the kitchen. Oh, in here, then. Oh, no. Simon, come out that Daddy's bedroom. Well, where is he? Where's who, Daddy? You know who. That, that, that couch slouch, Simon. <laughs> I know he's here. I can smell the sense in the air. <laughs> oh, calm down, Riley. You can see he's not here. Uh, it's lucky for him he's going. If I ever catch him around here again, okay, I'll... Relax, will you? Come on in the kitchen. I'll make some coffee. Yes, go on, Daddy. Have some nice coffee. Stop pushing me, Dad. I don't want coffee. That Simon's made me a nervous wretch. I'm going to bed. Oh, no, you mustn't. What do you mean, I mustn't? Uh, oh, nothing. I just mean, well, I, I thought we could talk. I've got only one thing to say to you, young lady, and that's about boys. And I can say it in two words. Watch out. Oh, go to sleep. I'm going. Good night. Oh, but, Daddy, I... Bad, dear. What's the matter? Oh, Mother, I... Peg, where's the top of my pajamas? In your bureau. Oh, good night. Sandy, something's wrong. Now, I can tell. Oh, Mother, it's... Why ain't there no buttons on my pajama coat? <laughs> Look, not one single button. They don't come with buttons. It's the pullover kind. Excuses. Always excuses. Well, good night. Oh, Daddy, wait. Mother, listen. Simon... And another thing. Whoever makes the bed, why don't they make it correct? It's full of lumps. <laughs> Will you please go to bed? Oh, good night. Mother, listen, I better tell you. Ah! Ah! Riley, what on earth? Save me. There's a man under my bed. What? Well, good night, all. It's not a man. It's Simon. <laughs> Simon. Now, wait, Mr. Riley. Simon, get out of this house. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore.
more, Riley. From now on, Simon can visit as often as Babs wants him to. Well, and I... that's final. Well, Pop, looks like we're going to see a lot of Simon. Uh, that's the trouble with being the boss of the house. No one else admits it. There must be some way I can get rid of that, Simon. I wish somebody could advise me what to... What... Oh, of course. Junior, take this pencil and paper. What for? Start writing. Dear Dorothy Fairchild, this is very wor- very worried father and I need more help. Like I told you, this pest keeps pestering my daughter and wasting her time when she should be studying. And besides, he's always saying how he wants to marry her. Why, Simon, what are you doing here? Babs, Babs, listen, I got great news. It's the most wonderful thing that's happened. Well, what happened? I am now Dorothy Fairchild. What? For two weeks while she's on vacation. The feature editor said I can write her column all by myself. Oh, that's wonderful, Simon. The editor must think a lot of you. Yes, sir. He looked at me this morning and said, there's the man to be Dorothy Fairchild. You see, he liked an idea I gave him for the Sunday feature page. Oh, what was that? An article on modern marriage with pictures in three parts, the wedding, the honeymoon, and the first baby. Oh, it sounds super. But will you be able to be Dorothy Fairchild by yourself? (laughs) Sure, it's easy. Look. I've already answered my first letter. It'll be in tonight's paper. Listen. Dear Very Worried Father, I am glad that you wrote me about this pest who is wasting your daughter's time. And in my opinion, this horrible situation calls for action. And in my opinion, this horrible situation calls for action. This young suitor is obviously a card. Cat. Cat. And when he talks about marrying your daughter, he is no doubt trying to deceive you. Hear that, Junior? I always said that Simon is trying to pull the wool out of my eyes. <laughs> well, read the rest of the answer. Uh, yeah, well, where was I? Uh, there is only one thing to do. Call his bluff. Suggest that the time has come for him to marry your daughter. Being the kid he is, he'll refuse, of course. And I don't guess you'll ever see him. Boy, what an idea. Oh, Pop, you're not going to do what she says. Why, certainly. That phony, he don't want to marry Babs. Tomorrow night, I'm inviting Simon to supper. And when I offer him Babs' hand, he'll realize he's bitten off more than he can chew. Oh, I just don't understand you. First you throw Simon out, and now you invite him to supper. What are you up to anyway? <laughs> Never mind, you see. Daddy, you're not going to make a scene. No worry, I'm going to treat him like one of the family. <laughs> well, it's very suspicious, this sudden change. You treated him so shameful. Yeah, I know. I treated him like an outlaw, but tonight I'm going to treat him like an in-law. <laughs> Riley, I don't like that. That's Simon. Now, remember, be nice to him for a change. Well, of all the... Well, well, well. Simon, darling. Good evening. Come in, my boy. Is it all right? Well, sure. Don't be afraid. I won't bite you. Well... If I do, you bite me back. <laughs> there. Now, let's get comfortable. I'll bed. You sit there. Peg, you here. Simon, here. And I'll stand here in front of the door. Riley, what's this all about? I'm coming to it. Simon, just what are your intentions in coming here? To eat dinner. (laughs) I ain't talking about your stomach. I'm referring to your heart. Riley, what is this? Daddy, if this is some kind of a... Please, don't interrupt. Well, Simon, what are your intentions for the future? Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I have only one aim, and that is to be happy. I ain't talking about being happy. I'm talking about being married. (laughs) Married? Simon, you're always saying how you want to marry Bed. Well, now's your chance to do it. Daddy, for heaven's sake. Quiet, Bed. This is no concern of yours. (laughs) Riley, what on earth are you... Well, Simon, I'm waiting for your answer. Are you going to marry this lovely girl, yes or no? Gosh, you mean me and Bab? You get married? Me and Bab? Stop stalling, yes or no? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh Uh-huh, just as I thought. He's back in... Did did you say yes? Oh, yes. Oh, you made me the happiest boy in the world. Dad. (laughs) Dad. Simon... And I want you to call me son. Son, get out of this house!
Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, Riley has been writing to Dorothy Fairchild, the love expert of the local newspaper, for advice on how to get rid of Babs' boyfriend, Simon. But Riley doesn't know that the Dorothy Fairchild column is now actually being ghostwritten by Simon. Well, good night, Mother. Good night, night, Dad. Just a minute, Babs. Where are you going? She's got a day with Simon. Oh, pipe down, Junior. So, sneaking out behind my back to see Simon, eh? I forbid it. But, Daddy, last night you said... Forget what I said. Now, listen to what I have to say. A young girl has got to be careful. That Simon is up to no good. He wants to marry you. Oh, right. (laughs) This has gone far enough. You're not going to drive all of us crazy. Oh, so now I'm crazy. Well, look at the way you've acted. One day you throw Simon out of the house. The next day you try and force him to marry Babs. And now you won't let her see him. Is that normal? I'm busy trying to be a good father. I ain't got time to be normal. (laughs) Go on, Babs, dear. Run along. Good night. Now, wait, Babs. I forbid it. You can forbid it all you want, but it won't do you any good. From now on, I'll decide what's good for Babs. Good night. That woman. I got a good mind to knock her teeth out. Well, Pop, you shouldn't talk that way about Mom. I don't mean your mother. I mean Dorothy Fairchild. She got me into this mess. Oh, why blame her? Maybe you didn't explain things right in your letter. Oh, yeah, that might be. After all, she's a pretty smart cookie. Junior, take a letter. Dear Dot. <laughs> Pop. Dear very worried father, from what you tell me in your letter, I would say the situation is extremely dangerous. You hear that, Junior? Uh, read the rest. I have tried to place myself in the position of this unscrupulous young man who is in love with your daughter. I asked myself, what would I do if an irate father tried to stop me from seeing his daughter? And last night it came to me. Elope, Junior. She says they'll elope. Oh, boy. Now I can move into Babs' room. So be on your guard Keep your eyes open Watch your daughter like a hawk Gee, Pop She makes it sound serious It is serious They're liable to do it The young fools But I'll outsmart them Remember, there's no fool Like an old fool (laughs) And this is called The city room, Dad This is my desk over here See the sign? Dorothy Fairchild Jeepers, Simon, I've always wanted to see a big newspaper offer. Uh, see that man coming toward us? That's the feature editor, Mr. Leroy. He thinks quite a lot of me. And the hop are you idiot? What are you doing here? They're waiting for you down at the hotel. <laughs> me, sir? The photographer just called from the bridal suite. He wants to know where the models are. Models? Yes, models. The bride and groom for the story on modern marriage. Don't tell me you've forgotten. Oh. Oh, oh, it's today. You lump. You miserable nincompoop! You peanut brain baboon! You Babs, you, you better go before he gets angry. <laughs> well, what are you going to do now? Where are you going to get models on a Saturday afternoon? Well, I could be the groom. But what about a girl? We need a pretty girl. Babs, you go home. I have to find a pretty girl. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about you, miss? Me? Why, I don't know anything. You don't have to. Just look pretty. There's ten bucks in it for you, okay? Oh, yes, I'd love to. Get over to the bridal suite of the Hotel Emerson right away. Pick up a tux and a bridal gown of the costumer. Yes, sir. And remember, Van Hopper, I want three shots. The wedding, the honeymoon, and the first baby. You get it? Uh, I've got it. The honeymoon, the first baby, and the wedding. Never get away with it. A lope, will they? Over my dead body. Who there, Riley? Going my way? <laughs> Who's that? It is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> You look pretty good yourself, Digger. Getting fat. Ah, yes. In my profession, you pick up a lot of weight. (laughs) 
Riley, why didn't you tell me the news? Tell you what, Digger? Come, come, Riley. I'm used to having some people give me the silent treatment, but I never expected it from you. Well, what are you talking about? A half hour ago, I was in the Hotel Emerson to attend a meeting of the UEPPHC. UEPPHC? Yes, the Undertakers, Embalmers, and Paul Bearers Permanent Housing Committee. <laughs> We lobby for housing projects. Our motto is, fill every vacant lot with people. <laughs> well, that's fine, but what's all this got to do with me? While I was in the hotel, who should I see but your dear daughter? Babs. And that likable lad, Simon. Simon? In full wedding regalia. Digger, they were... Yes, being escorted into the bridal suite. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Oh, Digger, they did it. They did it. Steady, man. I don't like the way you look. Better come over to my shop and stretch out. <laughs> you don't understand, Digger. They elope. Oh, you poor man. I know how you feel. Last year, my assistant took my business vehicle and eloped to Niagara Falls with my daughter, Brunhilde. Oh, that's terrible. It was indeed. They forgot that in the rear of my business vehicle was old man Fendel Kraut. <laughs> Imagine my embarrassment when people came around to see old man Fendel Kraut and I had to tell them he's on a honeymoon. <laughs> I adore honeymoon. They're so gay. Oh, Digger, I don't know what to do, my little pants. Well, don't stand there, man. Go after them. It may not be too late. You're right. I'd better get my wife and beat it down to that hotel. Just wait till I get hold of that Simon. I'll straighten him out. Oops, that reminds me. I have an appointment. <laughs> well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. <laughs> Gosh, Babs, you look beautiful in that wedding dress. Oh, thank you, Simon. I wish this was for real. Oh, Simon, relax. All right, now, let's get the picture. Hold that pose now. That's it. Now, change those outfits, and I'll take the honeymoon shot. Hey, what about the baby for the baby picture? Oh, the agency said they're sending one over. Should be here by now. I'll go down in the lobby and take a look. Gosh, Babs, isn't this fun? Oh, I'm crazy about modeling. When I get out of school, I think I'll... There they are. Now, will you believe me? Daddy! Mother! Babs! Simon! What? Hello, folks. <laughs> oh, Babs, my little girl, tell me, am I in time? You missed the wedding, Mr. Riley, but you're just in time for the honeymoon. Oh, Peg, we're too late. Now, wait a minute, Riley. There's Daddy, <laughs> how did you find out? We didn't tell anybody. Why, you. You won't get away with this, Simon. I'll... Now, don't get excited, Mr. Riley. It's just a stunt. A stunt? Peg, you hear that? That's all it is to him, a stunt. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Riley. I had to work fast, and Babs was the only girl around. <laughs> you, I'll fix you later. Babs, you're coming home with me. Oh, no, but Daddy. I... She can't go now. Wait till after the honeymoon. There ain't gonna be any honeymoon. Riley, I... wait. Okay, Vanderhopper, here's your baby. <laughs> baby? A baby? I'll murder him. What did I do? What did you do? <laughs> oh, Riley, calm down. Don't you Come on it? now, come on now. Clear the room. This baby's got to go back to the agency in 30 minutes. Take your hands off that baby. That baby's going home with his grandpa. <laughs> no matter what you... Wait a minute. You just got married. I'm having this baby a no. didn't elope? No. You ain't married? Of course not. This ain't my grandchild? How could it be? What a revolting development this is. <laughs> Look, Simon, 
I understand everything about the pictures for the marriage story, but what have you got to do with the newspaper? Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm Dorothy Fairchild. <laughs> You're Dorothy Fairchild? That's right. You... You write all those letters to worried father? Yeah. Some dope writes me every day. <laughs> You're Dorothy Fairchild. Yeah. I thought you'd get a kick out of it. Oh, no. You're going to get the kick out of it. <laughs> Dorothy, get out of this house! <laughs> to you through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Send your questions and comments to host at ClassicComedyOTR.com. Come back next Friday for another episode of The Life of Riley and check in on Monday for the next episode of My Favorite Husband. Please go to our website, ClassicComedyOTR.com, and support our show by clicking on the PayPal Donate button on the right side of the screen and donating on a one-time basis or becoming a patron and supporting our show on a monthly basis. Both of those buttons are right there on the right side of the screen. I encourage you to click them and keep this show coming to you through your support. It's greatly appreciated. Until next time, in the words of James Thurber, why do you have to be a nonconformist like everybody else? <laughs>